Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of The Extra Mile. This is the show that's going to help you own your run. In this series we're going to be taking an in-depth look at some of the latest and greatest products from some of the world's biggest running brands in an attempt to help you find the product that is right for you. It's not all about the product though, we're going to bring you some advice from industry experts to help you become fitter, faster and a happier runner. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you never miss an episode. Last weekend we saw so many events happen around the UK. We had Oxford Half, there was the Bournemouth Marathon Festival, the National Road Relays and Cardiff Half Marathon. But the big race that everybody was talking about is the Chicago Marathon, the fifth of the 2018 World Marathon Majors and it was supposed to be the Farrah versus Rupp showdown. It was Sermo Farrah that came home first in his Nike Vaporfly 4% fly nits, setting a new European record in the process in two hours, five minutes and 11 seconds. That was his first win over the distance and beat his PB by one minute and 11 seconds. In fact, all of the top five men were in the 4% fly nits. In the women's race, we saw the third fastest Chicago win of all time with Koskai coming in in 2.18.25. Anyone want to guess what shoes she was wearing? And from the track, the British Athletic Supporters Club are hosting a poll to see who should be Athlete of the Year. We retweeted it, so check it out on our Twitter feed and get your nominations in. Taking things off-road, how are your nerves on the downhills? We took this clip from the Innovate Descent in Kitzbühel, Austria. If this doesn't make your stomach churn, not much will. So take a closer look on our Instagram feed. Episode one is all about marathon shoes and we're gonna be giving you guys a chance to win a pair at the end of the show, so stay tuned. This is an exciting time of year for marathon runners with the results for the 2019 Virgin Money London Marathon ballot having just been released. If you got a place, amazing news. Do let us know about that in the comments and congratulations because you are about to embark on what is going to be an amazing journey. If you didn't, don't despair. There are loads of ways out there to get your marathon fixed both on the road and on the trail. So pick yourself up, dust yourself off and get out there running. One thing for sure though, if you're going to take on the legendary 26.2, you're going to need a decent pair of shoes. But which ones, I hear you ask. Well, there are a huge selection of marathon shoes on the market, and which one you choose can be a very personal decision. It's also based on factors such as your weight, your running style, and your pronation. Not to mention the fact that you might be looking for a different feel from your shoes, whether that's fast and snappy, or soft and oh so flirty. Luckily, here at ProDirect Running, we're in the fortunate position to be able to help you make that decision. So let's take a look at some of the best shoes currently on the market. It only seems right to start with a shoe from the sponsors of the Virgin Money London Marathon. So let's kick off with the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V8. As one of the key shoes in New Balance's Fresh Foam series, the 1080 is perfect for the neutral runner looking for a well-cushioned shoe. And this is a fairly lightweight shoe in the cushion category. Thanks to New Balance's Fresh Foam midsole, it weighs around 314 grams and it has an 8mm heel drop. It also has a breathable engineered mesh upper which keeps the foot nice and cool and gives it a good secure fit. If you want to learn a little bit more about the 1080, hit the link and check out our tech video. Another shoe to consider in the fresh foam range is the Zante V4. It's a little bit lighter than the 1080 and has a 6mm heel drop which makes it feel a little bit snappier underfoot. If you're after a structured shoe, check out the Vongo V3. Okay, so I mentioned a competition earlier and I can now reveal that we're going to be giving away a pair of shoes from the New Balance fresh foam range. You just got to stay tuned to the end of the episode to find out how to enter. You cannot have a conversation about marathons and not talk about the brand who have potentially pushed the discipline further than anyone in recent years with their breaking two attempt. I am of course talking about Nike. Now, we all know what happened in Monza, but for us the biggest and most exciting thing that came out that weekend was the shoes and the innovation that followed. The Nike Vaporfly 4% is undoubtedly one of the most important distance shoes in recent times. And if you've ever run in a pair, you know that that hype is justified. This shoe has taken over 80% of major marathon podiums in the last year. 
and it now holds the men's marathon world record thanks to one Elliot Kipchoge. What a race that was. However, I am not here to talk to you today about the Vaporfly 4%. I am instead going to talk to you about its little brother, the Zoomfly. This shoe proved incredibly popular when it first came out last year, offering you guys some of the same technologies as the 4%, but at a much more affordable price point. And the good news is that the latest version of this shoe, the Zoomfly Flyknit, is now even lighter than the previous model, and this Flyknit upper, it looks incredible. It is not just the looks that have been updated though. This shoe now features the same full length carbon plate that you find in the Vaporfly. Couple that with the React foam, and this thing is gonna feel amazing. If you're looking for a lightweight cushion shoe that is gonna take you the distance, the Zoomfly is definitely worth a look. However, if you really want a Nike shoe and you just feel that the Zoomfly isn't the one for you, that's fine. The Zoom family is massive, and there is a shoe to suit every running style. The PEG 35 is an absolute staple for many runners, and now with the introduction of the PEG Turbo, you can have that same feel but in a lighter, faster race day shoe. And again, if you're after a structured shoe, Nike have got you covered. Check out the Structure 22. If you want to know more about the Nike Zoom series and the shoes that are on offer, hit the link now to check out our feature. Next up, it is the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 7. This shoe is part of the incredible Adi Zero family and is many runners favorite and for good reason. This shoe is light. It only weighs around about 244 grams, which is pretty damn good. Now I know that that isn't as light as the Adios or the Takumi or even the Sub 2. And if you want a seriously fast, lightweight race day shoe, then you should check those out. But the Boston 7, what it offers you is a little bit more cushioning. So you're just gonna be a bit more comfortable over the full marathon distance. That is why this shoe is perfect for people looking to increase their PB, but who are just a little bit scared about stripping out all that protection. Light, fast, comfortable. We love it, go and check it out. And for those of you that wanna know, it's a 10 mil heel drop. And for those of you who are looking for a little bit more support, check out the Tempo 9. That shoe is designed for stability. It has a firmer cushioning on the medial side just to help guide the foot a little. And it's still nice and light too, weighing in at just 278 grams. When it comes to marathon shoes, we do have a lot of choice and there's plenty more to come. But first we thought you guys deserve some credit with this week's top follows. Now, somebody get the PB bell ready because you guys have been flying recently. First set hers at Oxford Half and Fiona set hers at Chicago. But our top follow this week is Marcelino or Calisthenics Runner on Instagram. He took to the streets of Chicago repping his Pro Direct Run Club vest for a sub three marathon. While he may have come a nail biting 48 seconds from his target, he still managed a nine minute PB and we're absolutely certain he'll get on his next one. So well worth a follow from you guys. Another great performance from one of our favorite London coaches, Ben Parks took third place at the Geneva 20K as he sets his sights on a 2.28 marathon later this year. And one of our favorite recent tags has to be from James, Swizz UK. He's just collected his park run milestone tee for doing 100 park runs, that is seriously impressive. And not only that, but he's also collected a 25 volunteer tee as well. Good work, James. So go give those guys a follow after you've seen the rest of this video. And don't worry, we haven't forgotten about the competition. Let's get back to the shoes. Next up, we have Asics with the Gel Nimbus 20. This shoe has been in the market now for 20 years and has been constantly improved and updated in that time. The Gel Nimbus is an excellent choice for those looking for a highly cushioned shoe. Asics as a brand just want to give runners the best running experience possible and protect them from any kind of discomfort or injury. The signature gel cushioning in the heel of the shoe and the flight foam midsole mean that the Gel Nimbus 20 is really going to look after your feet on those longer runs. If you need a little bit more structure from your shoe, then you should check out the Keanu 25, another shoe that has been extensively updated over its 25 year lifespan. If you want to know more about the history of that shoe and the technologies that are now in it, hit the link and check out our video from Japan. The Gel Nimbus has a heel drop of about 10 millimeters and it weighs just over 300 grams, which is still pretty light for a shoe with as much cushioning on offer as we have here. If you're looking for something a little bit lighter and faster from Asics, you should check out the Dynaflight 3. It still has a good level of comfort, but just has a snappier, faster feel, perfect for race day. 
Next to join the party is the Mizuno Wave Rider 22, and this is the female model that I have here. This is an absolute favourite amongst Mizuno fans because it offers a firm, stable, fast ride and a really good road feel. <laughs> It has a really nice wide fit in the forefoot, which not only makes the shoe more comfortable, but it also slows the build up of heat in that area. And this shoe is also pretty light. It comes in at around about 280 grams for the men's model, which is very competitive in the neutral shoe category. The lightweight and responsive nature of this shoe is partly due to the cloud wave technology that you see in the heel. This is a signature technology to Mizuno. The shoe also has a 12 mil heel drop. One of the most notable updates from the previous version is the one-piece engineered mesh upper, which not only makes the shoe more breathable and more comfortable, we also think it gives it a great, sleek new look. Mizuno have also just brought out a knit version of the Wave Rider, which looks very nice. And there's also an Osaka limited edition in honour of the Osaka Marathon. Hello everybody, my name is Ben Parks. A long time marathon runner, I've completed just over 60 marathons in my time. And I want to talk to you today about some tips for your first time marathon. In the start, it can be really daunting. I wanna break a few tips down to get you on the road to success. So the first thing I think is really important is to get yourself a diary or a tracking device to log and record all of the runs that you're going to do. For me, I use a Garmin a GPS device that logs every run I go on and I can monitor the pace and sort of the distance I'm traveling and the time on those runs as well. You can invest in some apps like Strava or Runtastic, for example, and your watch can sync up with those and you can have a digital record of all of your runs. Next up, we're going to talk about how many runs you should be doing during a typical training week. So for a lot of people, if they're going to be um, sort of coming from maybe a 10k or a half marathon, you might have been running about three times a week. In my opinion, I think you need to be running four times a week for marathon training. So the first uh, type of run to get in there during the week would be a nice, easy, long run on a Sunday. So that's very low intensity, low heart rate. It's anywhere between sort of 140, 150 beats a minute if you've got a heart rate monitor. And just conversational pace, the kind of pace you could chat with um, a friend if you were out running. Also, you want to add in a few uh, sessions. So usually it's going to be on a Tuesday, so maybe some intervals, some tempo runs or some progression runs. And then a little bit of um, sort of practicing your goal marathon pace, maybe on a Thursday. Also fit in another run around about those where you can fit, where you've got some extra time to get it in. So about four runs a week should see you through to the finish line. The next thing that any uh, decent sort of training plan or any um, successful marathon runner is going to have in it during the week is some strength training. Now you can't sort of go get by just on running alone. So you need to have a routine that you go through minimum once a week, um, just for about half an hour, which you can do at home and build this in to get your legs nice and strong to take the impact of running 26.2 miles. So a little routine that I like, some planks, some bridges, some calf races, and some squats. So four things there that you can do at home. You don't need any extra equipment. Starting out maybe sort of five to 10 of each one with about a 30 second rest between them. Moving on, it's really important to get a decent pair of running shoes and also what everybody forgets is a decent pair of running socks or a few pairs of running socks as well. So when you're looking for a shoe, try and find something that's got a lot of cushioning and support in there um, that's gonna get you through your training. And finally, what I get asked so much these days is questions about nutrition and what to eat, when to eat. I don't think anybody can genuinely recommend a particular gel because everybody reacts differently to them. So the best piece of advice I could give is to try a few different gels and practice with them on your longer Sunday runs. Try not to eat within about an hour of going out for your run. So try and have a little sort of meal one to two hours before you're going to go on your run and that will be nicely settled and digested before you go out. You won't be getting stomach cramps again. Also, when you finish your run, when you're through the door, try and get something down, whether it's a recovery shake or just some simple basic carbohydrates into your system as you finish your run within about 15 minutes and then a proper meal within a couple of hours. 
Next up, it is a shoe that is very close to my own heart as it was the first shoe that I ever ran in. It is the Sakoni Kimbara. The Kimbara has been extensively updated from the early model that I first ran in, but it keeps all those minimal qualities that I and many other runners fell in love with. One of the biggest updates to the newest version of the Kimbara is the full length Everon topsole, which gives the shoe a fantastically soft underfoot feel. The Kimbara has a really nice fit straight out of the box and it's very light too, weighing at just 213 grams for the men's shoe. Couple that with its low profile and excellent responsiveness and you're looking at a shoe that is perfect for runners who like to go with a bit of pace. However, not everybody is looking for a minimal shoe design and we know that. So if you need more cushioning, go and have a look at the Ride ISO. And if you need a bit of support from your shoe, the award-winning Guide ISO is the shoe for you. Our next shoe comes from Brooks Running, the Run Happy brand. These guys are so passionate about running and just want to make sure that you have the best run experience possible. And this is reflected in their superb range of shoes. We've picked the Ghost 11 as, as a nice mixture of comfort and lightweight, perfect for not only the marathon distance, but also the shorter distances that you'll be taking on during training. Now, Brooks recently introduced their DNA Loft midsole. This is lighter than previous foams due to added air in the mix and a little bit of polyurethane, which just gives it that extra bounce. This foam has been added to the Ghost 11 and it is an excellent update over the previous model. The shoe weighs 304 grams and has a heel drop of 12 millimeters. And it makes our list because it's just an extremely durable all-rounder, which is gonna last really well throughout your training all the way to race day. Brooks also have a great structured offering in the Adrenaline GTS 18, which is perfect for those of you who are the moderate pronation. Last, but by no means least, in our roundup of marathon shoes is the Hoka Bondi 6. Now this shoe is one of Hoka's original models and it is quite possibly the king of all cushion running shoes. If you need maximum comfort, maximum protection and ridiculously smooth transitions, then you have got to check out this shoe. And don't be put off by the chunkier appearance of the shoe. The Bondi 6 has a heel drop of just four millimeters and weighs in at about 309 grams. Some of the key features to note on the Bondi 6 are the Meta Rocker technology, which gives this shoe its distinctively smooth ride, and the one-piece upper, which makes the shoe really comfortable and helps to keep the heat down. So if you're interested in trying out Hoko, it's also worth considering the ever-popular Clifton 5. The Clifton again offers exceptional comfort and ride characteristics, but has a slightly lower weight at just 266 grams, meaning it's better suited to higher speed runners. I mentioned earlier in the show that we're going to be running a competition where you guys could win a pair of shoes from the New Balance Fresh Foam range. All you need to do to win that competition is go online at prodirectrunning.com and check out the shoes and then let us know in the comments below which one you would like and your UK shoe size. Good luck. <laughs>